Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, cynicism and snarkiness in the media. We live in an unfortunate and unhappy world where so many people are disowned, disassociated, downtrodden, and forgotten. We used to look to our local and national news anchors to be set back in the stream of life. We'd get facts and commentary, and we could have the world shaped before us in a truthful, meaningful, binding way that mattered. No longer. Today, our newscasters are snarky and cruel and confrontational. Just, it seems, for the sake of the drama of the confrontation. Not for content, and not because they believe the other person deserves the heat. And that all adds up to an empty covenant of meaninglessness. One dingy example of this new snarkiness is in MSNBC newsreader Brian Williams and his return to the anchor chair at 11 p.m. on that cable news channel. Remember, Brian Williams is the disgraced former anchor of the NBC Nightly News, and he was removed from the air when it was discovered he'd lied about his experiences in the field. From NPR in 2015. The revelation that Williams had misrepresented his experiences in covering the Iraq War resulted in a review of his work that was conducted by Richard Esposito, who leads the investigative unit at NBC News, and overseen by Kim Harris. Executive Vice President and General Counsel of NBC Universal. The review found that Williams made a number of inaccurate statements about his role and experiences covering events in the field. The statements in question did not, for the most part, occur on NBC News platforms or in the immediate aftermath of the news events, but rather on late night programs and during public appearances, usually years after the news events in question. So, Brian Williams lied, was found out, and was removed from NBC. Yay! Mission accomplished. Ah, uh, however, then, he was put back on the air by NBC on MSNBC. Now, I understand when the news broke of his proven lies, Brian Williams had just signed a something like a $50 million five-year deal. But sometimes, as a company, you need to eat your losses for the goodness of your soul and remove the liar from the forest. But no. NBC did not do that. They did not do the right moral thing for their broadcast company. Instead, Brian Williams was suspended for a little bit, and then he was shifted over and foisted upon us loyal MSNBC viewers to run out his contract when any news broke. So here's how that worked. If something exciting happened in the world, Brian Williams would appear on air out of thin air. He would kick out the current anchor, take over the chair, and use his horrible, overarching, and overbearing anti-MSNBC style to tell the world as he knew it. And Brian Williams knows it all. He tells us that. Every chance he gets. Brian Williams is pretty much suffocating and insufferable as a newsreader on air. 
and many of us wish he'd just go, do the right moral thing and retire and then disappear over a cliff. But no, Brian Williams now has his very own show, brand new show on MSNBC. In the dead time hour of the 11 p.m. night slot on the East Coast. Brian Williams has now made himself a direct competitor to the local news. And he's just as awful as always. And now, as proof of that argument, here is the promotional advertisement for his new show. Listen carefully. President Obama spoke at the United Nations for the eighth and final time as president. That green marble backdrop, it does not jive with Donald Trump's aesthetic. Four years ago, he tweeted, quote, The cheap 12-inch square marble tiles behind the speaker at the UN always bothered me. I will replace with beautiful large marble slabs if they ask me. As of this evening, there has been no such request from the world body. That is our broadcast for tonight. Isn't that remarkable? A news anchor who is supposed to be the voice of wisdom and intellect and a river of knowledge calls up an old tweet from American gargoyle Donald Trump just so Brian Williams himself could mock the tweet and make fun of Trump and the United Nations while giving himself the last laugh. Interesting. Here, I want you to listen to it one more time, to the unnecessariness of it all, as something intended to get you to turn in and actually watch Brian Williams on TV. President Obama spoke at the United Nations for the eighth and final time as president. That green marble backdrop, it does not jive with Donald Trump's aesthetic. Four years ago, he tweeted, quote, The cheap 12-inch square marble tiles behind the speaker at the UN always bothered me. I will replace with beautiful large marble slabs if they ask me. As of this evening, there has been no such request from the world body. That is our broadcast for tonight. Oh, there you have it. That promo runs constantly right now, and it never gets any better when you keep listening to it. And all it does is help you hate Brian Williams more than you already do. Hey, I get it. It's easier to mock somebody than do the hard job of reporting the news. And I understand it's easier to feign outrage than provide solutions in reporting. One only need look to Rachel Maddow, MSNBC host, and Brian Williams' cohort and enabler, who, when alone on her own show, is breathtaking genius. But... Rachel Maddow, in the company of Brian Williams, changes. This strong woman becomes a giggling mess, banging the desktop in front of her in forced laughter. Rachel Maddow, please, escape Brian Williams. You deserve so much better than being held hostage on air by such an insufferable no talent. But the real sin in the snarkiness on TV news is far beyond the giggling and the desk slapping. It is in the pretending that people like Donald Trump are real and deserving of the presidency and that they're not really a grifter. And all of that goes far beyond MSNBC and NBC and Rachel Maddow and Brian Williams. 
Without a total media surrender, Donald Trump would be stuck back in his golden tower in New York City and not damaging the democracy of the world. The media panders to Trump because they want outrageous ratings. And the best way to get outrageous ratings is to give over their airways to the ramblings of a madman who pretends only to be smart and well-educated and huge in all things small and smaller. And now that our media have created a monster for us, this American gargoyle, the mainstream media are too frightened to put him to death, putting him to death by merely reporting the truth against him. And so, we all suffer apart. Sometimes I wonder, though, if the declination of the evening news into a comedic sporting event of giggling and laughing wasn't forced before us by entertainers and funny people. Let's think about Jon Stewart, Bill Maher, Stephen Colbert. Those are a few who mock the news by mocking the news. And in their humorous attempts, they cheapen the real news by being more interesting than the real news. And so the real news readers panic. They want to be funny and popular, too. And so these supposedly serious people go for a laugh in the gut instead, and they forego the light of the mind. And in that bargain, we all lose, because none of us can take the hard truth anymore. But we still want to feel smart and informed, and so we watch the comedians and the news readers and put them on the same level with the same effort and identical interests. We purposefully but unwittingly blur the line between reality and fact and comedy and truth. And then the truth becomes the lie. And we all die laughing because nothing is really that funny. But everyone else is laughing, and we don't want to stand out too much, and we want to fit in. And so we laugh too. And the democracy decays all around us, groaning in false fits of giggles. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.